Jennifer Devine Hatch is an author, public speaker, she does motivational speaking, as well as teaching medical professionals patient perspective. She also has begun patient coaching, which is kind of like a life coach for people in medical circumstances or crisis. She is returning to us this year to talk about her new ventures. Some of you may remember when she spoke to us in 2005 um, when her book Scardust was published and she has several copies up here. Scardust is her children's book to help children cope with having scars. Um, I think probably if she had spoken to my children about their emotional scars when they were just young, maybe you could have helped them out, but I think they're doing okay now. Since then, she moved to Arizona for two and a half years after getting married, but is now back in the Twin Falls area and is here today to share with you some new ideas that she has. So if you would welcome Jennifer. Thank you. I appreciate you all having me today. Um, I was originally, I think, supposed to speak in April, so hopefully I have my stuff together. But <laughs> it's good to see all of you here, first of all, healthy and able to be here. Um, to give you a little history of my past, I have grown up in the Twin Falls area. I was born and raised here. I have cystic fibrosis, which is a genetic lung disease um, affecting mostly the lungs and the pancreas. Uh, but obviously, as you get older, kind of everything starts to go a little bit wrong. So uh, I have dealt with that. I'm also diabetic, but I'm allergic to insulin, and I, am, I have insulin malabsorption. So I do not absorb insulin correctly. So it's a little bit challenging. Uh, to keep myself healthy and alive at times. Uh, I have been in and out of the hospital, unfortunately, hundreds of times. Uh, had over 60 surgeries, which is why I wrote the book Scardust. Uh, I never really thought about my scars until I was an adult, and, and people can kind of be cruel sometimes, and so I kept getting asked, oh, my goodness, what happened to you? Um, I have a lot of scars on my chest, which obviously I won't bear for you, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> that was something that you could see in the summertime if I were wearing uh, just a normal shirt. And uh, so I just, I felt that it was really important, and I, I did some research, and there's never been a book about scars. So I figured, hey, that's my gift. That's what God kind of gave me to work with, so I'll work with it. And I uh, decided to publish my book uh, myself because I did give it to several mainstream publishers, and the main thing I heard about it was they love the concept, love the idea, but take God out of it. And that was not an option for me. So I chose to show people that you can do things not traditionally and still come out on top if you believe enough in yourself and what you do. So I moved to Phoenix after the book was published and I decided to, uh, that was kind of hoping that I would be in a metropolis where I could really promote the book, get it out there, get it seen. Uh, unfortunately, I spent almost an entire two years in the hospital in Phoenix, so I never really got to, put, to get my book out there as much as I wanted to. Um, and it was actually some pretty horrific experiences I had in the hospital down there. <clears throat> um, sometimes we think going to a bigger city has better care, and that's not always the case. Um, and I may be just kind of a, a, a anomaly in that situation. However, I, once you have a chronic illness, you do know your body and you know what works for you and what doesn't. And it's really important for medical professionals to listen to that and help use that for the better of your health as well as their treatment. Um, and I spent a lot of time in bed uh, for those two years. I was in and out of the hospital 20 times, had about nine surgeries. And so I had a lot of time to think. And unfortunately, a lot of depression sets in. Um, and I would just watch TV all day, and I would watch these inspirational stories and just cry and think, what can I do? So I, uh, <clears throat> I decided that when I moved back to Twin Falls, because <coughs> Unfortunately, had I stayed in Phoenix, I do not believe that I would have survived. Uh, things got so uh, controversial and, and public there that it was to the point where I really felt I would die in their care. And so I left, and I promised myself when I left that when I get to Twin, I will take it on, and I will take on helping to be the patient's voice. I think they need a voice, I think they want a voice, and we absolutely in all ways deserve a voice. Uh, a lot of people have friends, family, spouses that are going through, you know, chronic illnesses, newly diagnosed cancer, chemo. Uh, what I do as a patient coach is help the family as well as the patient through that entire process. A lot of times you have no idea what you're getting into. You don't know what to ask for. You don't know the comfort measures that might be available that if you don't ask for them, they don't really suggest them. 
Uh, you don't know the, the financial resources out there. Unfortunately, in Twin Falls, there are not a lot of financial resources for somebody like myself, who's 32, on disability, and fighting with a chronic illness. There's plenty for pediatrics, there's plenty for seniors, but that person in the middle really has no options. Um, so I kind of float day by day, um, by the seat of my pants, so to speak, and that's what kind of has determined me to get out there and make it be a voice. Um, <clears throat> I am working on another book, which I hope to be done in the summertime, and that is going to be about the scars, uh, the emotional and physical scars of chronic illness. And it will be kind of a, a brutal reality into what it's really like to be a patient. The things you think of, the things you don't want to think of, the things maybe nobody thinks you should think of. Um, I'm really honest about those because I really feel that through that admission and that pain, somebody else can prosper. And maybe, just maybe, a doctor's life will be changed as well to realize that they are, you know, they are dealing with humans and every single life in this room is precious. And no matter your economic status, you deserve to live. And it's really sad when we have to tell people they don't because of money. And so my goal eventually um, is to have a foundation, nonprofit foundation specific to Magic Valley only. Um, I want to start small, go big. <laughs> you know, take, take it in pieces. Uh, to provide comfort measures for patients or comfort care things. Um, I've spent weeks at a time in a hospital. I never had, you know, a DVD player. I never had a computer I could go to. I never had, you know, a room. What I, what I love the concept of is I call it a sanity suite. And that's for a hospital to have a room where patients can disconnect from the medical facility, so to speak, and their family. Obviously, you know, they could only be in there if they had a doctor's order. But this was something that I came across in a hospital, and I thought it was a great idea. Um, and I don't see why there, there isn't a reason that we can't provide more comfort measures for patients. So my one hope is right now I'm coaching a girl going through chemotherapy. And I've gone every week with her to her chemo sessions. And I see tons of people there. I see people who have nobody sitting with them. I see people who, you know, are crying and have nobody there to help them other than, you know, the nurse who's occasionally available to help. Because um, they're very busy. Unfortunately, cancer is very popular, as we all know. And <clears throat> I did have the unfortunate, um, I guess, journey with my brother, who is actually a year and a half older than me, also has cystic fibrosis. Um, with the week before I moved from Phoenix, he was diagnosed with cancer. So he had cancer and cystic fibrosis, which are two obviously very lethal situations. Um, and that was a learning experience, because I had never really felt the pain from afar. I'd never, I was always a sick one, so I never knew how it felt to see somebody go through that. So that's when I moved here and said, that's it. I'm not going to let somebody do what I did. So anyhow, sorry. <clears throat> Hopefully, with help and with uh, resources, I can get these things going in twin. I'll admit, you know, being sick has been a full-time job, so I have not been able to fully extend my education to the degree that I'd like to, but I certainly do believe that I have a great education in life. Um, and I have been a patient for 32 years. And I am very proud of making myself educated about my situation and helping others to be educated about theirs. Because fear is usually what causes <laughs> negative things to happen a lot of times. Because your mind is your worst enemy, obviously. So most of the time, you can talk yourself into a lot. <coughs> And if we can help people to be more mentally supported through their illnesses, through their doctors, as well as their environments. Um, I love interior decorating, and I think it would be a great thing for some doctors to maybe punch up their, their waiting rooms a little bit to, to create a more um, emotionally healing environment for their patients. You know, you don't want things to, every time you walk into a doctor's office, you don't want to constantly think of disease, pain, and what's going to be wrong. Uh, those are things that I think need to be addressed in the area, and it's going to take me a long time. I realize that, and you know, it's it's testing some some politics. It's testing some uh, you know areas that maybe people aren't ready to go into, but I am. 